Make January 21st a day on, not a day off, by participating in the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service at 8 a.m. in Dean Porter Park. The event is free to the public. The Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service is presented by the University Scholars Program and the Dean of Students Office. For more information, visit utb.edu slash mlkday. The Collegian News with news anchors Corey Aiken and Vanessa Garduño and sports anchor Samantha Ruiz. This is your weekly webcast update. Hello YouTube TSU students. Welcome back to the Collegian News. I'm Samantha Ruiz. And I'm Vanessa Garduño. We hope you enjoyed the winter break. University of Texas at Brownsville President Julia V. Garcia summed up last semester's accomplishments and talked about the future of the university during last week's convocation. Here's Viridiana Zuniga with the story. UT Brownsville President Julia V. Garcia welcomed faculty members during the spring 2013 convocation to celebrate past accomplishments and talk about the future of the university last Wednesday in the Sudby Lecture Hall. Garcia spoke about University of Texas System Chancellor Francisco G. Cigarro's plan to merge UT Brownsville and University of Texas Pan American and establish an emerging institution yet to be named that will have access to the permanent university fund in Texas. The university of Texas has to do is first abolish UT Pan American, abolish UT Brownsville, in order to establish a new university yet to be named. Um, right now, UT, fill in the blank, name is a bill, uh, along with the medical school. If the money that is going to be opening up for us is tough money, that's not state money. It is already sequestered money. It is different money. It is money only available for UT and for a &M. So it's not going to cost the state of Texas any additional dollars. So that's very, very good news. So that's what the zero fiscal note means in terms of this bill. However, before implementation, the plan requires approval by the Texas legislature, two-thirds of the vote in the House and two-thirds of the vote in the Senate. As for the future, Garcia said the building of a new UT Brownsville campus is a fact. There's lots of uncertainty, but here are some certainties that you need to be very, very clear on. We will move forward with building the new UT Brownsville campus. We have hired architects and designers for that purpose. Many of you helped us choose those architects. We had over 10 think, or, or more uh, faculty members that participated in that process with us. They are hard at work. We have been to their place. They've been to our place. We've studied all of the sites that have been proposed to us in terms of site uh, acquisition. And eventually, we'll make a recommendation to the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents will decide what they want to do. But that site selection and the purchase of that property will move forward. Um, probably the decision will not be made until late February or a March. Although UT Brownsville expects to enroll about 7,400 students next fall, the right sizing of staff will continue. Why the right sizing of staff? Because the services that we're providing through this contract with TSE will no longer will be provided. So our security needs to be reduced to only those security necessary to provide security for UT Browns in this new uh, iteration here. Our, our enrollment services, our registration services, our advising services, our health care services for students, all of the services that we've been providing to TSE will now be reduced. Garcia said the good news are that TSC will be hiring staff. It took the separation, it took the end of the partnership to create such angst about how to build this new UT university and cause the idea of this sort of unification or merger model to surface. The convocation ceremony included the recognition of Larry Laugh as a professor emeritus. For the Collegian News, Viridiana Zuniga. Newly sworn in U.S. Representative Filemon Vela has been appointed to the House's Homeland Security Committee. Vela, a Democrat who was elected last November to the new 34th District, 
received a briefing last Thursday from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security about the efforts to secure the border between the U.S. and Mexico. Vela said his priorities in the 113th Congress are to create jobs and support efforts to revitalize South Texas and border economy, according to a news release from his office. Here's Alex Rodriguez with this week's segment of I Think. The I Think question of the week is how do you plan to make this year better? Actually, uh, 2012 was a really good year for me. I'm going to, I guess, try and maintain the same lifestyle I did back, did back last year and continue eating healthy and working hard at the gym and doing, uh, pushing myself at school and classes. Uh, I plan on um, studying more, focusing more on school, maybe less on the social activities, um, maybe cutting down on some of my responsibilities that I've taken on that um, have been taking up maybe a little bit too much time because it is my last semester in school, so I need to work a lot harder. Well, usually I make the same resolutions every single year, but I plan on maybe trying to keep them this year and to maybe improve or be more studious in school and also maybe improve with my time management a little bit better because it seems like sometimes I'm not sure which I should do at what moment. And that's about it, I think. For the Collegiate News, I'm Ayas Rodriguez. In sports, Los Fresno senior Debbie Lozano is the first recruit that has signed to play for the UT Brownsville volleyball team next fall. Lozano, the 32-5A Offensive Player of the Year, Tally 311 kills, 31 aces, 79 digs, 50 solo blocks, and 43 assisted blocks. Meanwhile, the athletics department has begun recruiting athletes for men's and women's cross-country teams, which will begin competition in fall 2013. We're recruiting both for cross-country. I'm helping mm -hmm. out with that since we don't have a cross, full-time cross-country coach in place. And um, also recruiting for volleyball. Uh, we have one that's going to join us in the spring already a transfer student that we're really excited about. And then we're looking to add probably two more after that. We're going to sign a couple of local kids next week, um, one from Los Fresnos, and then another one that's from McAllen that's actually at a junior college. She's going to come back and play. Anyone interested in trying out for the team should contact the men's soccer coach, Dan Balaguerro. Men's and women's golf coach, Anthony Lopez, said the team will participate in five tournaments this semester. Lopez said the teams to beat this season are Texas Wesleyan University, Northwood University, as well as Our Lady of the Lake University. The women's team is top 25 in the nation. They're 23rd, which is the lowest they've ever been. Uh, we're bringing in uh, another player on the men's side. Uh, if everything works out the way it should, we should be top 25 uh, by the first few polls. That's it for the Collegian News. Thank you for joining us.